by simply following the instructions, uh, it's not really that bad. I'm glad I did it. Yeah, this is exactly what I'm looking for right there. That's step number five right there. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Sagit Nat too. Uh, there's about uh, four episodes that I have put out back to back. Uh, I just want to go back on one of them. This is about the uh, stretching the rod bolts on the K24 project. A little disclaimer. Uh, what I am about to uh, say or do on this episode is just nothing but my opinion and only following what ARP instructions on how to use their stretch gauge, which is step number five. For some of you that had watched what I did, uh, I follow the uh, Ford's rods manufacturer uh, torque value uh, recommendation and since I have a DIY stretch gauge and I also borrowed my boost buddy's uh, stretch gauge and when I checked it it turned out to be okay but it took two tries to obtain that specs which is five and a half ten thousand to six thousand uh, today's episode, I'm going to uh, follow ARP instructions on how to use the stretch gauge. The bolts together with the rods, depending on what brand do you have, it also have its own separate instructions. But I will try to get into that later. But on today's episode, I will just focus on the ARP instructions on how to use their stretch gauge. And uh, this episode is about step number five, right here. The reason behind why I'm doing this again, which is everyone know I'm already done with this. I'm getting ready to uh, button the cylinder head and everything, but I'm still missing a, a key component that it put me on hold. So anyway, uh, the reason behind this is because I wanted to do it myself and also it's a good demonstration for new builders, for young generations that wanted to uh, experience, you know, thinking about getting one of these. Step number four, which is uh, applying a lubricant. And I already did this earlier. I put some fresh uh, lubricant on there, so I'm all good there. Step number five, it said using a box and wrench to tighten the rod bolt Put it on before you install the stretch gauge. And I think uh, the reason why you hardly see a procedure like this, it's just very cumbersome. It's because of I did it earlier and I was just using uh, these wrenches here and there's really not enough leverage. I can get it on to about 5,000 of an inch, but it just really requires some, some effort. Anyway, I have my uh, small breaker bar here and uh, an adapter. The instructions say to go ahead and place the gauge. Make sure I'm on the dimple and we're gonna zero this out. This on yours always make sure that this is tight yeah it keeps coming off okay it's because of whenever you move it like this uh, <laughs> this one is loosening itself okay The bolt is on relaxed form. That is zero. Okay, step six. Now placing the 
points of the gauge into the dimples, which is I did. And this one is just talking about making sure that I have a preload uh, from point 0.2 to point 0.4 preload on the gauge. Once the preload is set, tighten the set screw and lock the nut. And next is just stretching it. Let's do this. Even though I'm holding the fixture, it's not really affecting the needle. Okay. My stretch specs is from five and a half to six thou. I'm gonna try not to go over. That's four and a half. I could hardly see, that's why. Five and a half. Six thousand, right there. That's six thousand. Next is this side. Now my other set of gauge, I'm just going to put this on there so we could see if there's any movement on this after I torque this one. I got it set at zero. Now I need to turn the gauge around. Just give me a moment here. I could have just used this one on this side, but no biggie. All right, I'll make sure that this is uh, no load. All right. It's loose. Put my adapter on there. Make sure I'm on the dimple. I'm gonna zero this. Uh, zero right there. Let me set you up so you can see it. That's two thousand. block is running away on me I have to reposition myself that's 4,000 right there and 6,000 right there let me take this off that's 6,000 and on this side it's still zero Now you have seen it by just using one indicator, right? I just put this on so we could see if there's any effect whatsoever after I have tightened that one. But as you can see, none whatsoever. 6,000. There you have it. 
Now let's go back to uh, the instructions. And number eight, tighten the rod bolt until it stretches the amount of recommended by the rod bolts manufacturer. Like how I demonstrated it. Now lastly, it said if you follow these two rules, you should always get accurate and repeatable results, which is A and B. Dim poles and points are both seated on the rod bolts. And B, you always use 0.2 to 0.4 preload on the gauge and tighten the set screw and lock nut on the adjusting screw. And just like how we have it right here. Awesome, man. Now, before I forget, I'm going to check again. Okay, 9,000 is good. Perfect. Now I'm going to remove this. I have to make sure that it rotates freely. Adapter. Perfect. Awesome, man. For some of you guys that wanted to, uh, to make your own uh, stretch gauge, I mean, this is going to cost you less than uh than this one here of course but there's a downside on making this the reason behind the spring is let me take this off i have said this on the previous episode the mechanism is too weak it's not like the arp this one is really takes a little bit of force to uh, to go in but this one it's not really but let me show you what happened when I don't have the spring on there it falls on its face see it it just dropped again see Yeah, the mechanism on the gauge is just too weak. So to help it out, I just needed a spring. The washers I use, this is from a uh, throttle position sensor. And the spring sits right on the center. So it doesn't wobble side to side. It has an identification, which is perfect for the spring. I got the spring from uh, Home Depot. You can get it from any hardware store. It has a lock washer. Anyway, I'm gonna put it all together. Otherwise, uh, I have to save some. I have to. <laughs> it'll take uh, forever for me to put the lock back in. All right, and uh, this is where I end this episode. And thank you all for watching. Again, uh, allow yourself some time to read the instructions. And just like what it say at the end. If you follow these two rules, you should always get accurate and repeatable results. Bye everyone. I'll see you guys on the next.